are in complete mess. We are close to the brink of being a failed state. And the unemployment rate is so high that people are turning to the creative arts. As much as it's awful what's happening, but I'm also happy that it took this hardship that we're in for people to start discovering their talents. And that uniqueness is something that we have to strive for. The youth in Lesotho, I find them very exciting and very creative. It's very important to realize what we have and try to make the best of what we have instead of just thinking that we are living in a very depraved or nothingness. And I think some people are doing it. All right, uh, come in. <laughs> I can turn this off. Photographer Corey. We came up with this project called Trash to Treasure, where we realized that we don't have money, but we have a lot of people that are not really doing anything in our communities, and we have a lot of street kids. So myself and my partner, we went out and just approaches the street kids, and they come together. They learn how to turn trash into treasure and somehow get people into the idea of, you can start from nothing, and you can also help us. Now we're gonna try and make a pouch. It could be for your phone, it could be uh, for your business cards, it could be a wallet. People don't really have a good a waste management system. So we're trying to approach people to give us their byproducts or their offcuts so we can make things with them. So there we go. From trash to treasure. <laughs> The name of the workshop I started is GYR Good Young Rasta. I've been working with some people, so this are some of the ladies that uh, I, I teach how to use, how to recycle. I would like to say I teach all people, all genders in general, 80% towards women because I wanted to do something positive. Then maybe if I would help um, a larger population to use its hands, you know, to be um, entrepreneurs and gain something from me, learn and then teach, pass the skills further on. When it comes to um, conservation, I don't understand a person who would kill a single tree just to produce something that makes him look nice like killing a tree. I use trees, I don't kill trees, I prune trees. Like for example, most of the wood you see in here, the least of it I buy, but most of it I used from dead trees. So um, when it comes to conservation, it's very serious. I think we need to focus more on it and work more on planting more trees, you know, help more people produce more things without killing things. We 
we have got 120 living trees. This one over here is a November peach that we have. And uh, this one over here, it's a pear. Those are apricots on the other side. What we try to do is to travel around the whole place of Murija and to collect different kinds of flower seeds. The importance of collecting seeds and protecting seeds, we found that many trees are being lost out of seeds. So by collecting seeds, we are conserving more trees to come to life more than they can be thrown away for death. These are watermelon seeds that people do throw away on the streets. These are our roses. We are going to plant them and uh, they will give us roses. This is how we had all these flowers inside this place. Everything, I think, it started with the love of art. Everything started with one flower. This is a place that looks like a lot of junk, but you know, uh, there's nothing called junk. You take the bottle and uh, you take uh, some plastics, you put them all together into this. And when this is full, then it's when then you can try to build something out of there. It's very, very, very good to make uh, bricks out of uh, the eco brick system. These tires, I collected them from roadside, they were thrown away. So I just denied that mess, mess. I just said, okay, let me just try to create something out of this mess. So I made some windows out of these tires. So this is my place of mess, but it's not just mess, it's for the good. Bingo, 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 bingo. We did an eco concert, which is more like a musical workshop, where we'll be teaching people about environmental issues that are pressing, but using music in order to get them entertained and then get them engaged. We use a form of entertainment. A lot of young people can relate a lot to music. They love music, they enjoy music. So they, they are already drawn to us. I feel like a younger generation is more open to trying to solve the world's problems. We want to talk about deforestation, we want to be talking about climate change, we want to talk about whatever environmental issue. We give people um, notes on that, so they write songs from scratch about whatever themes we've given them. The Sudasan, the local band in Malayalia, they use traditional instruments to make their music and they produce traditional music really. The first song they did was called Ngopela Musi. It's a song about someone in the village who took it upon himself to create positive change in his community. If you wanna see good things happening, you take the first initiative. You don't expect somebody else from wherever to come up with a solution for that, but it's your responsibility. <laughs> Here in the Sutu, in this country, most of the people, we have noticed that they have lost their culture and we want to keep Basoto culture music safe and we hope the songs that we create, they understand and then they can follow the messages. <laughs> This is Katara. This is Moropa. Long time ago, the Basotu people has to play that kind of instrument. It's called Khwadinyane or Mamukhoro. In English, they call it violin. They've been to Zambia, they were in Cape Town. It was nice, very nice. We learned how to play different instruments when we were there. We were making workshops with students, teaching them how to make these Basotu culture instruments. 
and people there were so friendly to us. We got girlfriends, we got phone numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I know most people think uh, people who are doing big things are people who are from wealthy families or people who are rich, but uh, I believe even people who are from poor families can still do good things because everyone is given a mission to fulfill in the world. So my mission is to do um, cycling to change the lives of youth or the lives of others because I've noticed that cycling has changed my life. Most uh, youth who are loitering on the streets, you know, they keep themselves busy on alcohol, on drugs. So cycling has helped me to avoid all those things. Carry on, carry on, be proud. I was lucky through my passionate to open a bike shop. So that bike shop is working on repairing bicycles, selling bicycles, building bicycles from the frames I have there. But here in Africa, like Lesotho, most people don't know the importance of, of, of bicycle. We have a lot of import cars in Lesotho and the congestion is very high. So the reason why I'm here at prep school is because most children are watching TV. So that is why I try to change their lives, like being happy with other children. To empower young people in our organization, we use the power of participatory documentary film to facilitate discussion during the screenings. We are working mostly with vulnerable groups, some of them being sex workers. They would uh, disclose that uh, sometimes they are torn between choosing to use a condom and not using a condom. And if they don't use a condom, they get more money. The young people, they fear being pregnant because they will normally say feeding a baby is expensive and then having HIV you'll just consult a doctor and get medication. One of the biggest issues happening in our community is the early child marriage where young people get married as early as 12 years old and we are trying by all means to involve all this when screening the films and disseminating information just to give people knowledge and information that getting married to a younger child is wrong and illegal. Issues that are also very serious in our community considering young people again, it's the issues on LGBTI. <laughs> We want to create an unconventional environment of talking because for us to chart a different path, we have to do unconventional things. Enough is enough! Mainly the message of Idle Heart is to integrate the humanity in our society. And it's also to commemorate the people that have passed on through homophobia, transphobia, and all those hate against the LGBTI. Uh, we come together, we break all the labels, and we just celebrate humanity itself. I'm Neo, you're someone else, and hi, I'm human. Before, hi, I'm gay, or hi, I'm whatever. Cafe World is more of a creative space for creatives, artists, and entrepreneurs to kind of collaborate, interact, and just a space for them to inspire each other and find ways of working together. And also as a safe space, a space where everyone can be themselves without feeling intimidated or afraid. As a filmmaker and as an artist, I also wanted to see what is happening in other parts of the world and I've traveled a bit but then after some time I just decided like I need to come back and do stories and projects that explore African issues because there's so much in terms of Africa that is not exposed. Okay. 
I always encourage people find ways of collaborating, finding other artists from other countries, collaborating with other people. Initially, when the space was created, we had one feel of having a very open space, more of um, an artist hub. Basically, what we like doing is just to play around food artistically. So we decided, you know what? The only way to keep young is to have healthy food and fresh food. Most food that we eat, they are really contaminated. We don't know what we are eating. My biggest aim is really to grow the organic food. See to it that we get better food, better life. We're going to teach people about good food. And as we educate them, we learn too every day. Even in the background, we've got different artists laying down their work and expressing themselves. When you're here, we let you exercise the freedom uh, of this space. And that's what we wanted to do, to have that space where artists can come and be at their most uh, creative element. It started out as a hobby. I was curious and then it got to a point where I needed to use it to sort of, you know, liberate uh, my people. Because um, I think the biggest problem with the youth in Africa is that we are still slaves mentally and we really need to break away from that uh, mentality. Until it got to a point where I had to write something very controversial, I went ahead with the idea to write uh, a song called Still Here. And Still Here is about all the social injustices in the country, you know, paint a picture of what we are feeling as the youth in the country. So I used uh, the song to sort of express my anger. It goes like, fact is, nobody does it better than I. Top, Top 10, 10 in the, the homeland, homeland, no lie. lie. Started when nobody gave me a chance to rise with a blue pen. I got true plans, no doubt. Knocking on the door, never gonna pause. I got haters on the other side, praying for my loss. See, I aim straight for the heart. When the gun draws, blood pours. Too many die in the city. Nobody care when we cry in the city. But fact is, I'ma practice till I get on the top and cure all my soul's injustice. My heart bleeds, so these words are retained. I remain in the game. Just to break free from the chains to keep people the fame. Only thing I care about is my people dying in pain. Art can tell a story. You can actually express or teach people through art. Like the man with the arrow. That shows a man who is hunting, who is hunting for his family. And you can actually tell the culture of the person by the attire. You can see a Mosoto wearing a Seshweshwe or Tetana. You can tell that's a Bushman hunting. You can express the struggle that black people face. I think you just need to know what to tell the people and then you can draw that. That's how you can reach out to people. So I use charcoal, I use charcoal sticks, I use charcoal chalk, I use charcoal pencil, anything to do with charcoal. It's, I, I think it's very good, it gives me good results. You know, one time I was out of charcoal chalks and then I had to draw something at the time. So I said, no, why let me not use this? Some guys were having a fire then, then I said, I came and picked up after that. And then I give it a try, I give it a try as I'm doing now, and then it was beautiful. It gave me beautiful results. This is our logo as Kemet. Kemet is one of Africa's first civilization that actually gave birth to the world civilization. Normally the African map is strong like this, but because we call ourselves perception shifters, we then decided to change the perception of how we always view Africa. We are trying to bring that different perception to say that things are not as always as we are taught there is another way around things. This painting here represents the multifaceted angles of reality. If I cover this part here, you see a face looking that other direction. 
And then when I cover here, you see a face looking the other direction. But when you look at the whole of it, it's one face facing right straight at you. The painting depicted here on this sweater, it's of one tribe in Southern Africa, it's the Batwa. So it actually teaches about solidarity and of how we should come together as Africans helping each other. It depicts a man lifting a woman up to say that one hand helps another. The Basotho blanket is actually a throw, but then we decided to create them in a rather fashionable way so that they stay relevant in the modern times. This the Basotho blanket we call Seana Marena. That means we honor our kings. The print on it, it's a print of Milimil that symbolizes fertility and the abundance of food in Africa. Let me know when you... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I use my poetry to advocate for things that are, are close to my heart. Things like child abuse or domestic violence or human rights, especially with the homosexual rights as well, gay, lesbian pride. We do what we call hip hop and, 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 and poetry. But we don't just do your regular boom bap or your, your, your hip hop, your, you know, we're talking two pack type of things, things that have messages things that will leave a mark. And now we've got designers and photographers and filmmakers. We've got a huge group of people, even graphic designers. You don't, it's not so much uh, something that is resistant wise, but it's more pride and culture proud wise. And the beautiful thing about what's happening in the city is that we're all coming together. We're complementing each other. We're bringing it all up. We are all saying, we want to be proud to be Basotho. All I can say is that if the youth stand up on the side of righteousness, I think they should face up any odd or any threat. That's their right to fight, to overcome the obstacle of being put in a bottle. As long as you think what you are doing is right, you stand for it.